this is some work that I've been doing over the last uh, kind of few weeks and months. Um, and there is a paper out uh, on the archive about this. Um, but I'm also hoping to uh, significantly generalize and study uh, in further depth some of the ideas that are in here. Uh, okay, with that said, um, so I'm going to try and do this in a very kind of pedagogical way. Uh, so I'll start off by recapping what hot file algebras are. So my diagrams um, in this talk will always be from bottom to top. Um, I'm an optimistic person. Um, and so, okay, start off with, uh, we have an algebra. Um, the, def the definition that I'm going to use for an algebra is a, a monoid in the category of vector spaces. So we have uh, an associative multiplication, which is the top thing, and we have that it's unital, which is the bottom thing, where the spiders um, are all the, 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 usual, um, the usual morphisms. And then a co-algebra co is just the flipped version of this, um, where I've uh, changed the color as well for clarity. So we have a co-associative co-multiplication on the top and then a co-unit on the bottom. And then a bialgebra being an algebra and a coalgebra which are which are kind of interacting in the in the sense here. So we have that the the algebra is a coalgebra map and vice versa. And then we have that the units and co-units are um, are also um, uh, co-multiplication and multiplication maps respectively. And then a Hopf algebra is a just a bialgebra um, that also has an antipode. Uh, S such that we have this uh, this hot flaw being obeyed. Um, now a very simple kind of the most simple example of hot algebras are um, abelian group algebras. So in particular, if we have the, the cyclic group of order D, then um, the group algebra of Z D has a basis um, of states um, given by the group elements, and it has multiplication given by the uh, kind of linear extension of, um, of multiplication in the group. This obviously has the unit being the, the um, unit of the group um, and co-multiplication is just a coherent copy and the co-unit is just a deletion map uh, and the antipode is just the group inverse as one might expect. Uh, so this has a, a dual algebra um, where we flip everything around. Um, in which the uh, the basis elements are um, functions from are delta functions from uh, from the group to um, to the field, and this has a multiplication given by this uh, kind of delta function um, here, and uh, the co-multiplication is this kind of um, um, uh, what's it called um, convolution is the word I'm looking for. Um, uh, that we have at the bottom here, and then um, all the other kind of additional bits are, are, are pretty obvious as well. Okay, uh, so these two algebras are uh, kind of nice because they have a Fourier transform between them, uh, which is the, just the usual discrete Fourier transform, which I've written here explicitly. And uh, this Q uh, guy here is a primitive D3 unit root of unity. Um, all right, so having kind of given a bit of algebraic background, I'm going to introduce a kind of QDIT uh, surface code. So we have a two-dimensional lattice um, and for convenience, I'm making it all this like square lattice with arrows in the uh, kind of either going up or going right. Um, but this is just for convenience. Um, in general, this works for um, uh, more or less any lattice um, embedded on a um, on a 2D surface. So at each edge, uh, we put a QDIT that is a copy of the of the group algebra. And so the, the Hilbert space of the whole thing is just a tensor product of all of these group algebras. Uh, now at each vertex, we define an action of the of the group algebra. Sorry, um, Tanton, can, can so, you go back a slide? Yeah. What's P? I'll get to that. I, I'm going to uh, use both B and P in the next couple of slides. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 
for, for completeness, V is the set of vertices, E is the set of edges, and P is the set of faces. It's P because it stands for plaquette, but I'm going to use faces because it's shorter. Um, so at each vertex in the set of vertices, we have an action of the group algebra, uh, which looks like this. So uh, this is just applying an, uh, an X gate or an X to the L gate for the, for the elf um, element in, uh, in CZD um, to each outgoing edge and the inverse of this to the incoming edges. And similarly for faces, we'll also define an action of, of CZD um, such that we have this Z gate being applied to uh, each edge, which is facing in a clockwise rotation. So if you imagine when you start at um, some point at some, some, uh, some vertex uh, on this face, and then we go in a clockwise direction round, then we, uh, we give a positive, um, we, we apply a, a Z gate if it's in the, in going in that, the edge is going in that direction, and then a, a, the adjoint of that is going in the other direction. Uh, now, a minor comment is that the, uh, because CZD and the, and the function algebra are isomorphic, uh, defining actions of CZD or the function algebra are actually the same. Uh, you, can, you can define it either way. Um, so you might see this as being defined by more generally in, in the group case as being defined as an action of the function algebra. But for here, I'm going to define it as an action of the, of the group itself, just for, for convenience. Okay, so uh, having given these, these actions, I'm going to say that the stabilizers are measurements of these, uh, of these operators on the vertices and faces respectively. And you can do this kind of in a lab by uh, making quantum circuits to do these measurements and you can uh, put qubits at the so-called syndrome qubits at the vertices and faces um, to do all of this stuff. Um, and for each of these measurements, these local measurements on vertices and faces, uh, we get D possible uh, different outcomes for each of the different eigenvalues um, of, the, uh, of, of the operators we're measuring. And the, uh, the logical space, uh, which is called HVAC for physical reasons of the lattice is defined as the span of all states in the Hilbert space, such that the measurement outcome corresponds to the, to the, um, to the Q to the zero. Uh, one. So if you take this to be the qubit case, then it's, this is just all of the plus one outcomes. Um, so anything which satisfies, um, which satisfies these, the, uh, this, this uh, measurement condition. Um, so I've said that the, I've, I've put integral actions here because there are some uh, connections to algebra. Uh, but I won't talk about this unless people really want me to. So the, the, the projectors which correspond to these eigenvalues are the actions that I've written here. So if we have some sum over all of the group elements uh, and then this, uh, this thing acting, so this will give you a, a sum of a bunch of x and x dagger gates, and this will give you a sum of a bunch of z and z dagger gates, respectively. Um, and so for, uh, for any state in the, in the logical space, we, uh, you can clearly work out um, just by shuffling some terms around that we have that this, uh, this projector acts as identity and therefore so do any individual actions um, uh, in, from, the, uh, from the group um, on, a, on a vertex and then the same thing for faces. And as a result, we can, you can check that we can always write down at least two logical states and for our purposes, uh, we're going to call these the, the zero logical state and the delta zero logical state. So the, in the top one, you can see that the, uh, the thing on the right, before we apply the, the product of projectors to it, the thing on the right is always going to satisfy uh, uh, B, BP. That is, if you apply Z gates to this, um, to the, this uh, tensor product of zero states, <clears throat> it'll be left, left invariant. And um, so the, uh, if, we, if we then apply the the product of, a, uh, of uh, AVs to this, then the uh, the resultant thing will also satisfy all of the um, all of the conditions above. Um, oh, I should should have mentioned here that uh, these um, projectors commute with each other. Uh, that's an important bit that's missing from the slide. Um, and so, therefore, you can then you can see an equivalent thing in the other basis by um, by taking uh, by doing AV a, on the thing on the right at the bottom, and then um, doing BP afterwards. 
okay, so we have two, two logical states. I, I don't guarantee in the general case that these are independent, uh, that these are different states, but we can always write down at least two, two of them. Uh, Carlton? Yep. This middle equation, so I see like yeah, that the vacuum is defined to have these stabilizers, so AV applied to, to, to Psi is indeed Psi. But you say yeah. this is equal to just doing a single K to Psi? Yeah. So if you if you if you look at the sum and you and remember by the definition of an action that the um, that if you act on on it with uh, two things uh, one after the other then this is the equivalent to multiplying them together and then applying the action. So you, if you use the group multiplication of k, let's say we call this k k primed to make it different with this, then if you multiply this by k primed, then you just get the same thing again because you're summing over all of them. So all you'll um... do is rotate the terms around. Right. So what you're doing is sort of um, you can view this the opposite way. If you have a k applied to psi, it's like you can uh, introduce an AV because AV is a yeah. stabilizer of psi, and then you can cons you can put the k into the AV because yeah. you're summing up all the things. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I said that this was a code. So. In order for this to the system to be a code, it has to detect and correct for some errors. Um, so I'll define uh, an X type string operator as just being a product of X and X dagger gates uh, acting on um, some with with support over some um, some qubits on the lattice and then acting trivially elsewhere. Uh, and so in particular, um, I'm not sure how how easy this is to see from the from the diagram, but we have that uh, A is the is the um, state corresponding to the arrow pointing up here. And then B is the state corresponding to the arrow pointing up to the right of it. C is the, is the arrow pointing from left to right, which the, the, um, the string operator also passes through and, and so on. So hopefully that's clear. Um, and so the orientation uh, kind of depending on the, um, which way the, uh, the red arrow is facing in, with respect to the black arrow determines whether we apply an, um, an XI or, uh, or the adjoint of that um, to, the, uh, to the, uh, ve the, the vector space on that edge. Um, so if we have this for some logical state um, that's in the, uh, in the vacuum, in the, in the logical space, then clearly the, uh, the projectors, so if, if, we, if we take any given um, any given uh, face operator, um, face projection uh, that this uh, uh, string passes through, then unless it's at the at either end of the string, then uh, this thing will will commute with the um, the the X type string and uh, give you um, identity still, and the same for applying the uh, vertex projectors anywhere. So the only uh, difference in outcomes will be at the end of the from the uh, the z um, measurements at the at either end of the string. Um, now you can also this is a kind of an independent uh, lemma technically, but you can also uh, move the the string operator around so long as it doesn't pass through any other as long as it it always passes through a locally vacuum state, and so long as the the ends are still the same. Um, so in this sense, you can kind of think of the string operator as being defined up to um, some kind of uh, framed discrete isotopy on, on the lattice. But I'm not going to pr prove that or even demonstrate that here for brevity. Um, so similarly, we can have a Z-type string operator, which acts like, uh, like this thing on the left. So uh, whereas before we were passing through faces and then crossing edges, now we're going to um, pass through vertices and cross edges in a kind of similar way. And the, uh, the, again, we have the, the direction of the arrows with respect to the, um, uh, to the edges on the lattice uh, define whether or not we introduce a plus or a minus in the, um, in the, the phase that we introduce. And just as before, we, we have that the projectors commute with uh, this string operator everywhere except at the, at the ends. And so we have that the, uh, the X type uh, measurements detect uh, Z type string operators and vice versa for the X type string operators. 
Um, okay, so this is only a, uh, these are only a, a handful of possible different kinds of errors that we can, um, that we can have in, in our lattice. But uh, actually, because of the kind of digitization of quantum noise, if we have any superposition of these uh, errors, then the error correction code will also correct for it by kind of uh, nil of lama. Um, now, you can also see uh, this isn't included in nil of lama. This is a property of the, the locality of the of the code. But if we have any uh, disjoint um, z z type string operators, let's say. Um, such that they don't interact on the lattice or the endpoints don't, don't touch each other on the lattice, then this will also be corrected for. Uh, that's kind of self-evident. Um, so if we can uh, detect and correct for all of these operators, what are the things that we can't detect on the lattice and what therefore is a, is a logical operator on the logical space? Um, well, because the, the, the things that we can detect about string operators are the endpoints, if the string operator doesn't have any endpoints, that is, it's a closed, um, a closed loop, then it's completely undetectable. Uh, but it turns out that by this kind of um, isotopy that I described before, uh, if it's a contractible cycle on the lattice, then it contracts down to, to nothing and therefore acts trivially. Um, and you can prove this relatively easily. So therefore, if we want to use this, uh, this model um, for quantum computing, uh, we must either have a lattice be on a manifold with some non-trivial uh, homology such that you can have non-contractible cycles, um, or we need to, um, to use boundaries um, to do computation uh, in a slightly different way. Um, and for practical purposes and for what I'm going to talk about here, we mostly care about the, the latter option. Um, because trying to build large kind of um, n genus things is uh, is pretty hard. <laughs> uh, Carlton, um, yeah. So just a, a, a noob question about surface codes, but um, you say if you have like a string of these sets or, or x's, there are errors which you can detect, uh, yes. like most of them. But yeah. uh, a general error will just be like a single qubit will get like an x or a z applied, not a string of them. Yeah. Right, so. Is that I mean, sort of the, equivalent the, to the, the, the same thing? The same thing applies, right? A, 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 a one qubit string is still a string. Um, okay. It turns out that the algebra of single qubit um, strings is actually um, slightly complicated. It, it's uh, it's a lot nicer and easier to talk about uh, longer longer strings. Um, but you can you can pretty easily work out to yourself that a single a single string you'll get detections um, at either end still um, or in the top and bottom in the um, in the um, in the face detection case um, and so you can show pretty easily that a single qubit thing can be corrected for by the code and therefore the interesting things are the are the longer uh, the longer operators. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay, so uh, very briefly, I'm going to make it have a physical interlude here. So physicists call this kind of thing a Z2 gauge theory. And um, so the, this talk about kind of um, discrete isotopy and so on, uh, the important thing about the code is that you can't determine the logical state by local measurements or local operations um, in general only by some kind of global thing which um, which uh, kind of uh, forms a non-contractible loop. Um, and uh, this property is supported by the very deeply uh, quantum uh, nature of the of the code. Um, it, it's only possible because of long range entanglement where the um, the code space is not a particular uh, cannot be defined locally. It can only be defined as a subspace of this of this, uh, of this uh, massive entangled state. Um, so this model uh, is a relatively recent thing. Um, this this whole it's a, it's a very simple example of a very wide and interesting and deep uh, algebraic uh, theory of these kinds of um, these kinds of structures. 
which breaks the the land the what's called the Landau paradigm, which was the uh, kind of a method for characterizing phases of matter in in last century. Um, the idea of the Landau paradigm is that you observe some kind of um, symmetries of your model at, at the um, at the um, kind of close range uh, local level, and that this can tell you something about what the the global phase looks like. Um, whereas these topological phases, you can't detect uh, which state the logical um, which state the phase is in just by inspecting a um, a local kind of segment of it. And these are uh, these are closely related to to topological quantum field theories. Okay, so having given you the basics of the of the lattice model, I'm going to define what a patch is. So this patch has um, has some qubits uh, like I've got here, where it ends um, on either side and at the top of the bottom. And so we still have uh, vertices and faces which we um, which we apply measurements on, but we don't measure the uh, the the individual edges at the very ends. So we will still measure the Actually, can you guys see my mouse when I'm uh, when yes. I'm moving it around? Okay, so we still measure this face here with a with an um, with an X measurement, but we don't measure the individual edge next to it with a, with another um, measurement, which one could apply to uh, the phantom face here. Similarly, we um, we do the same uh, at the top. Um, and we don't measure the we don't do a vertex measurement of this uh, of this guy up here. <clears throat> so what this means is that um, the if if one is to have an operator um, which uses these edges, then uh, it can it might be um, detectable by the measurement here, but it won't be detectable by uh, by whatever measurement we could have applied applied over here. Uh, okay, and we call the the top and the bottom rough boundaries and the left and right smooth boundaries. Um, okay, so a good example of these is this is this X type string. So this uh, extends all the way from from left to right, and in general, uh, because these uh, lattices are uh, kind of topological in nature, one could um, add uh, arbitrarily many extra. Uh, Qubits to make it a, a much bigger patch, so long as it's still uh, defined as, uh, as I said in the last slide. So uh, if we if we have an X type string which which goes across here, the, it still commutes with projectors um, everywhere, and the the locations where it would not commute with projectors and be detected are um, the the faces which no longer exist, and therefore this thing can no longer be detected by the measurements, and this is a logical operator now. Um, and there are d different ones of these um, string operators, and so we will call. We'll, we'll let's say that we have the uh, the zero logical state that I started off with um, a while back, which is still perfectly reasonable to define on a patch. Then I can define the logical states uh, uh, for each um, element in the group by um, uh, inductively adding or, or keeping on applying X type string operators along here. Uh, and by the kind of uh, isotopy um, thing that I mentioned before, you can also move this string upwards and downwards on the on the left and right so long as the, and, and in the middle so long as it's um, so long as it's still uh, supported all the way from uh, from the left side to the right side. So we have some well-defined logical states here. Similarly, we can apply uh, Z-type strings from top to bottom here, um, which will do the same thing. And I'm going to call these logical states um, delta i for each i in, uh, in the group. Uh, now, importantly, uh, you can relate these, uh, these states by the Fourier transform. Um, and you can genuinely check that if you, if you sum up the the corresponding states on the lattice, then you do get the, the right things out. So this is actually a, a Fourier transform of, of logical states. And um, the, um, uh, the implication of this is therefore that the logical space that you have is isomorphic to the 
uh, vector space that the group algebra is supported on. So we started off with some group algebra CZD, uh, which is a d-dimensional algebra. And so the logical space of the, of the patch is also uh, d-dimensional, uh, which doesn't sound very profound, but it, but it ends up being kind of useful. OK, so having got all of this, now let's try and do something with it. So if we start off with, um, with two patches um, with, with two different logical spaces, then, and, and these are non-interacting entirely, then clearly we have the combined logical space, which is just the tensor product of, of these two. So if we, do, if we want to do something starting off with a, uh, with a single patch to get to this um, tensor product, then we can start off with one, which I've kind of elong I've made an elongated, elongated from left to right here. And we can split it by measuring out some qubits in the middle um, to, uh, to get to, get to uh, two different uh, patches. So to see what this does to the, to the logical state, let's start off with, so let's say we've started off with our zero um, logical state. We've applied an X string across here. And then we measure out this. Well, regardless of what the measurements uh, outcomes are on the on the individual qubits that we measured out, we end up with two separate patches where the uh, the resulting um, operation would have been to apply two separate um, X type string operators. And because this defines what the logical states are, we can easily see that this uh, is a is a coherent copy of the um, the um, the i at uh, the i states in the in the logical space, and you can do the same thing for the other way around. So if we were to start off with a, a patch which was elongated from the top to bottom, and then measured out qubit qubits along from left to right, then we'd get the other um, the other kind of split, which we'll call a rough split. Uh, and this is a coherent copy in the other basis. And because these bases are related by the Fourier isomorphism, which I started off with, we can put them both in the um, in the CZ uh, D basis, which gives you this this thing for the um, for the smooth split, and this thing for the rough split. So you can see that these are this is this is the coherent copy, and this is convolution. So we have the the co-multiplications of CZ D and of the function algebra, um, which correspond to smooth and rough, respectively. And the important thing is that these algebras now both sit on the same basis. So this is a this is an I rather than a delta I. Um, if you're interested in why this is uh, basically using the the unnatural isomorphism of uh, a vector space and its dual to to make it sit on the same um, on the same space and in the same basis. Um, and I'll kind of. Um, skim over the details of how merges work because they end up uh, being a bit more complicated. But uh, broadly speaking, you can do the same thing the other way by, uh, by multiplying um, ribbon operators together, um, which, which sit on the same, um, in the same direction. And these give you the, uh, the smooth and rough uh, merges of patches respectively. And in the, um, in the, She's a D basis, these give you this guy, and there should be a VL in the, in the bottom right here. And so we can see that we have the multiplications of, now we have the multiplication of the function algebra on the, on, with the smooth thing, and the multiplication of the group algebra on the bottom. So that's the other way around from what we had here. Um, and we can also apply a, uh, a logical Fourier transform uh, on the actual state. So if we, take each qubit in the patch and then apply a Fourier transform to every single one of these, then it, it turns out that this gives us a, um, a logical Fourier transform on the whole thing, um, which is very, very straightforward to prove. Uh, okay, so I've given kind of a, a taster of what the, um, of, of how you go about showing that all of these, um, that these maps uh, are indeed what you get when you, when you perform lattice surgery. Um, so now I'm going to zoom out and stop thinking about individual edges and measurements and syndromes and so on, and start thinking about kind of the phase and, and how it how it um, how it looks. Uh, 
So here I'm going to draw uh, green for a rough boundary and red for a, for a smooth boundary and blue for clarity will be the, the bulk in the middle. And as before, my diagrams go from bottom to top. Um, and this is at the top is just we're not doing anything to the lattice. It's in the, it's in the same state that it started off with. On the bottom, we're going to do a smooth split, which is the first uh, the first lattice surgery operation I showed, and this gives the the coherent copy on the logical state. And if we take the uh, the zx calculus for for czb, which is just the d the d dimensional uh, zx calculus then the connection becomes uh, pretty clear between the two. So here we have a ZX, a ZX spider giving the co-multiplication. And this is the same thing as doing the, the, the smooth split on the left here. And we have the same thing for uh, a so-called smooth unit. So this is just the, um, this is just the, um, the, the plus state or the, the delta zero state uh, on the logical space. This is the corresponding ZX diagram, and this is its linear map. And so if you run through, you can see that the, the smooth um, lattice surgery operations co all correspond to the green spiders, and the rough lattice surgery operations all correspond to red spiders. And I'll kind of flick between these a bit. Um, so you can see that the, the smooth uh, operations are actually um, a Frobenius algebra, and the rough operations are, uh, are another uh, Frobenius algebra. And you get this, um, uh, this interaction between them given by the, the, the hot flaws and the bialgebra. And here I've drawn a, a rotation because what a rotation does is you apply these, uh, these Hadamards or these uh, Fourier transforms individually to your qubit, and it actually uh, changes which orientation your rough and your smooth boundaries are when, when you apply it. Um, and so you can kind of see from the topological diagrams that I've drawn that the algebra laws that I gave at the start are kind of implicitly satisfied here by some kind of uh, isotopy. So on the top we have this uh, this unit unit rule where the, this smoothly deforms into into this thing on the right, and on the bottom we have the same bit in uh, in spider notation. And um, a little kind of categorical remark is that. All of these Frobenius structures are exactly the same as one gets from um, the kind of pair of pants algebra, um, if you're familiar with that. Uh, and you can make a category of uh, pair of pants algebras, and it, it, indeed, a, the, cate the free category of pair of pants um, kind of uh, tangles in space is equivalent to the category of uh, the free category of a. Um, of a non-commutative Frobenius algebra. And so on both the green sides and the red sides, we have a Frobenius algebra. And if we put this, these on the same, in the same kind of 3D space um, with the right interaction rules, this is kind of uh, the same thing as saying that they're interacting in the sense that, that ZX people are familiar with. So of particular interest, we have the bialgebra rule here, which is slightly wacky. <clears throat> where we have some co-multiplications, some green co-multiplications at the bottom and some red multiplications at the top. And if you kind of uh, deform everything and then close up the hole in the middle, then we get this, this thing on the right-hand side. And you can check that this is actually satisfied on the lattice uh, kind of immediately because all of the implicit um, um, logical linear maps are just the, the, the same as the ZX generators. Um, meaning that it must be satisfied. Um, now, one thing that I don't understand and that I would like to understand is what the connection is between uh, these kinds of logical block diagrams, I'll call them, and quantum field theory or kind of uh, topological phases or uh, any of these kind of higher algebraic ways of reasoning about um, about these kinds of uh, this kind of matter. So typically we have that a that a lattice model corresponds to a kind of uh, implementation or discrete uh, version of a topological quantum field theory. But what's going on here is actually not very topological. We have some kind of uh, deformations that we can perform, 
but in the middle we are we're at some point we have to close up the hole in order to get the, the thing on the right hand side and this thing this this kind of closing up the hole the um the uh the surgery that we're performing is kind of geometric in nature uh it's not it's not uh, purely kind of diffeomorphisms or whatever um, and so I would like to understand why this is the case and if there are connections with a kind of um, higher algebraic um, way, of, uh, way of seeing this. Okay, and uh, you can trust me um, that if you apply the, uh, the antipode um, being two Hadamards in a row, then we do indeed get the, the hot flaws that I mentioned at the start as well. Okay, so the short summary is that we can very straightforwardly start off with a QDIT lattice model and perform lattice surgery on it and show all, that all the linear maps um, work in the way that you might expect. And that the maps on these logical states are exactly those of the, the uh, group algebra and its uh, dual function algebra because of how the string operators that I mentioned at the start compose. And the, the surgery, the, these diagrams you get from surgery uh, seem to be some kind of simulation of, uh, of a Hopf algebra in a, a, on, on the logical space. Uh, so there's lots of things that I, want to, that I want to do to follow up this. So firstly, uh, what happens if you replace this uh, extremely simple algebra with a more interesting one? So at the moment, I'm trying to work out um, the case for group algebras, the most the kind of thing of note when you replace um, the cyclic group algebra with a more general group algebra is that you don't have the Fourier isomorphism in the same kind of way. So in the, in the in CZD we have that the, the um, Fourier isomorphism relates the dual algebra and the group algebra, but this is no longer the case when we go to to, to other finite groups. And instead, you can still define a kind of Fourier transform, but instead it, it corresponds to the uh, Peter Weil isomorphism, if you're familiar with this. This is uh, kind of a, a famous group theory um, result relating uh, representation theory to the, to the underlying uh, group. Uh, and if we go to a more general hot algebra, then it can get completely wild. Um, we can put conditions on it so that, such that we still have a kind of generalized Fourier transform, but understanding um, how that actually works and what it looks like is um, is uh, is pretty challenging. Uh, so these are the first, the most obvious things that I would like to do. Um, so for for qubit lattice surgery, it's well known that different geometries of patches. That is, we don't just start off with a square. We could start off with something which um, has maybe more more different edges on the sides of it. Uh, can be useful for doing different kinds of, of, uh, of circuits for performing quantum computation. And, um, and I, I don't know what this looks like if you, if you go to the QDIT case. Um, in fact, so uh, I forgot to put this in earlier. Um, we know that the, 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 uh, the CZD um, lattice surgery is still not universal for quantum computation without uh, magic state in injection. Uh, this is kind of immediate from looking at the the spiders that you that you have in uh, as zx diagrams uh, from the from the lattice surgery operations. Um, so I don't know what happens if you introduce other different geometries of patches into this. Um, so something that somebody has asked me before is how you introduce twists and um, uh, boundaries that are no longer just gaps boundaries at the edge, but uh, kind of transparent boundaries between um, the phase and itself in the middle, uh, which are well studied in the literature, but I don't know how they interact with, with lattice surgery in this way. I don't even really have a good understanding of how they interact with lattice surgery in the qubit case. So, um, so that still needs quite a lot of work. And then the, the fourth one I've already mentioned, and the last thing, um, so the um, the Frobenius structures on uh, the green sides and the red sides um, are well known to correspond to the um, to this presentation given by the pair of pants algebra. And uh, David Reuter has conjectured that there's a um, th 
that there's a similar presentation of bulk algebras of a specific kind given by the diagrams that I gave here. So that if we start off with, uh, if we define some suitable category where the objects are these kinds of squares and the morphisms are diffeomorphism classes plus some geometry of, um, of manifolds in between them, then we get a, pro, uh, a, a presentation of a so-called unimodular Hopf algebra. Um, I don't really know how to go about proving this. Uh, I've looked into it a little bit, but I don't know enough about either topology or geometry to, to properly tackle it. But yeah, I think that there's lots of interesting directions to take this, uh, this work, which was at its core a fairly simple application of, um, of, of, uh, of Abelian group algebras. And I think that's me.